program. Okay, so um, and here this my opportunity to present respiratory therapy in the Philippines. I think um, I'm one of those na old enough to to have witnessed the growth of respiratory therapy in the Philippines. So and that's why I said I'll do this presentation. Okay, so the title of my presentation is respiratory therapy in the Philippines: the past, present, and future. Okay. So as we all know, respiratory therapy is a profession that has long been in existence since the 1950s, which started in Northern America, particularly the United States. Okay? And then over the years, it expanded to other continents and countries such as the Middle East, China, Taiwan, Singapore, India, Brazil, Mexico, and the Philippines. Okay? And I think we're fortunate now. We're one of those countries way, way ahead now. Uh, the respiratory therapies was started to practice. Actually, it was in the late 70s, okay? Yeah. So um, again, respiratory therapy in the Philippines and how we fare in the other countries worldwide, okay? Yeah. So it will be divided into three sections, okay? So the first one will be how does RT in the Philippines started and then what is the status of respiratory therapy in the present and then the future of respiratory therapy in the Philippines. Okay, so I start with how does art in the Philippines start? Okay. So actually, I was fortunate. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm moving it. It's not working. Unshare it first. Okay. Stop sharing. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'll present it now. Oh, sorry. Okay, so nothing. The second. All right, can you see my screen now, Michael? So I changed it. Does it change? Not yet. It's not sharing. I think, yeah. So what if I Okay, so is it okay now? All right. Okay, so um I'll I'll 
set it in full screen, Michael. What can you see? You can see this, the slides on the left side. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. Or I, I, I think I don't. I cannot uh, enlarge. I, uh, I cannot set it on a full screen. So is that okay? All right. Okay. All right. So I'm better start now. Okay. So um, yeah. Um, I'm just fortunate yeah to tell to say that I'm one of those who uh, was able to witness the growth of respiratory therapy in the Philippines since started in the late 70s. Though I started a little late, mga 1983. Okay. All right. So, um, so again, what, how do you define or what is respiratory therapy? Respiratory therapy is a profession that has long been in existence since the 1950s in Northern America, particularly the United States. And it has expanded to other continents and countries over the world, such as the Middle East, China, Taiwan, Singapore, India, Brazil, Mexico, and the Philippines. And we're fortunate now Medyo ahead tayo because uh, it was in the 19s, in the 70s that our that respiratory therapy has started in the Philippines. Okay. So, um, so again, uh, respiratory therapy in the Philippines as compared to the other parts of the world. Okay. So my presentation will be divided into three sections. Okay. So one is the how does art in the Philippines started, and then the second section will be how, what's the status of respiratory ther therapy in the Philippines now? And then the third, third um, section will be the future of respiratory therapies in the Philippines. Okay. So actually, it was in the, in the late 70s that um, respiratory got started in the Philippines. A group of American art artists from the company called Medical Services of America Incorporated set up base in the Philippine Manila in the late 70s and began training allied healthcare graduates such as you know, medical technology or BS medical technology, physical therapy, pharmacy, nurses. Okay? So uh, to become the first respiratory care practitioners in the Philippines in their OJT program. So uh, their OJT program uh, varies from three to six months. Okay? And then because of the theoretical knowledge that we acquired from college, so medyo madalina, okay? It was just the practical side that we need to be oriented on the, for, the, for the respiratory therapy. And it is with a plan to set up art departments in various hospitals in the country, bringing with them yung mga refurbished equipment. So ibig sabihin yung mga second hand that has been accumulating or in numbers in the United States. So they want an outlet for those machines, okay? And while doing that, almost simultaneously, a Filipino engineer was being trained at Veterans Medical Center by Dr. Teresita Estiquilla, who is a known uh, pulmonologist. And she is now actually one of the advisors to the National Association of ARCPP, okay? To become the first inhalation technician in the country. So yun ang simula ng ating uh, respiratory sa Pilipinas. So, um, this is a letterhead from the uh, yung aking uh, no certificate of employment that I got. So ito lang ito. Ito yung kanilang logo, though because uh, I just want to to distinguish because there's currently merong Medical Services of America na uh, presently been active ngayon. No? This is an old company. This is an old one. Okay. So basically, MSA or Medical Services of America Incorporated is the pioneer of respiratory therapy in the Philippines who successfully negotiated with different tertiary hospitals in Metro Manila to set up the respiratory department, who is staff. So they provide the staff with mga OJT trained respiratory technicians. Okay, yeah. So um, these are the few tertiary hospitals in Metro Manila at that time, which MSA was able to negotiate, successfully negotiate and set up the respiratory therapy department, and which are staffed by MSA trained RT. Okay. So the first one is Polymedic General Hospital in Mandaluyong, who, which is uh, which is a different name now. And then the Chinese General Hospital in Manila, Metropolitan Hospital in Manila, Mary Johnson Hospital in Manila, St. Luke's Hospital in Quezon City, and the Los Santos Medical Center. Okay? So it seems to work both ways because these hospitals were able to, to get those machines for free. And actually... 
uh, instead were being uh, paid about 35, 30 to 35% of the income from the RT department. And the rest was for the Medical Services of America. Okay. So these are the initially the first few hospitals. Okay, so um, I just want to show to you, this is the certificate of attendance uh, uh, for a respiratory therapy training program or in the, I mean OJT. Okay, so medyo um, easier now on, with regards to theoretical because most of those who get involved or get trained are actually graduate as a, a medical technology, nurses, physical therapy, and pharmacies. Okay, yeah. So um, I just at that time, this is a new picture, but uh, there was, um, I just want to show you who is the manager or the uh, op, um, the pinaka pinaka uh, pinaka boss at that time. This is Mr. Juna Diaz King. Okay? Actually, Mr. Juna Diaz, uh, the first uh, manager, nito, med, the Filipino manager in the Medical Service of America, because prior to that, they were all Americans. Okay, no, medyo established na. So, so umalis na yung mga Americans at binili na kay Mr. Juna Diaz. Okay, actually, uh, with all honesty, okay, that, uh, actually, I, I think... Um, uh, I can call him the father of respiratory therapy in the Philippines, okay? Because um, he really worked hard um, to make Medical Services of America a company uh, uh, to be established in the Philippines and be, uh, be a profit, profitable one. Uh, he, will, he provided a lot of training for Filipino, um, aspiring to be technicians and able to provide jobs, uh, hundreds of jobs, to many of us. And then later on, mga training niya mga staff were able to work abroad. Okay, so so better again is Mr. Jun Adias, who I can consider the father of respiratory therapy in the Philippines. Okay, yeah. So also um, in the 1980s, uh, I think start of RT education. Okay, so basically uh, it was Mary Charles College, who is the first school in the Philippines to offer respiratory therapy education with a two-year associate in respiratory therapy, which was followed immediately okay, by a two-year diploma, again, the same, two-year diploma in respiratory therapy by Manila Doctors Hospital and Emilio Aguinaldo College. Okay? And then, so at that time, ang unang uh, RT program sa Emilio Aguinaldo College is a two-year diploma program too. And then in 1987, the first four-year Bachelor of Science in Respiratory Therapy was offered by Perpetual Health University in Binyang, Laguna. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so again, um, for the RT education in the Philippines, it's Mary Charles Hospital or the yeah, Mary Charles Hospital School of Respiratory Therapy that pioneered the formal education of respiratory therapies in the 1980. Okay. So um, it established the first curriculum for a group of Philippine students who underwent curricular training through a two-year course leading to a certificate in pulmonary therapy. So ito yung, basically, ito yung major, yung official program for RT education, okay, provided by Mary Charles Hospital, okay. So and then followed immediately by a two-year diploma in respiratory therapy by Manila Doctors College, okay, and then Another program, the same um, same uh, two year, will be provided by Emilio Aguinaldo College. Okay, then in 1987, a four year Bachelor of Science in Respiratory Therapy program was introduced by the University of Perpetual Health, Dr. Jose Jitamari Medical University in Minyang, Laguna, which was considered the first BSRT program in the Philippines. Okay, and then later on. Emilio Aguinaldo College started offering the second BSRT program until now by elevating their two-year RT program into a four-year BSRT program. Okay? So, so, yan ang ating mga simula ng ating RT education. Okay? And then, so leading to how our organization was able to, to get set up. In February 17, 1991, the first meeting of respiratory care supervisor was held to discuss the need for a national organization for respiratory care. Okay, so may naunan dito yung Philippine Association of Respiratory Care, which apparently was changed to PAPSI later on. 
Okay? So, um, in August 17, the second Arctic Organization, Philippine Association of Pulmonary Care, PAPSI, held its first annual convention with the team Pulmonary Care, the Breath of Life at the Lung Center of the Philippines. So, yun ang pinaka unang convention that was the bliss for respiratory therapy. Okay? And in July 1993, it was a historic moment because there was a presidential proclamation which was uh, number 2017 declaring every third week of July as National Respiratory Care uh, respiratory care week, which was signed by then President Fidel B. Ramos on the initiative of PAPSI. Okay? So um, a few paragraphs mentioned was that whereas PAPSI aims to encourage, develop, and advance the art of science of respiratory care by promotion of the understanding and utilization of respiratory therapy. So, um, so ito yung naging unang official acceptance ng respiratory therapy by, a gov by the government. Okay? So none other than the president of the uh, Philippines, Fidel B. Ramos. So, hanggang ngayon, okay, so we are celebrating Respiratory Care Week third, uh, every third week of July, which usually coincides with the annual conventions of the ARCPP, yung ating national organization. Okay, so uh, basically, ito yung ating proclamation number 207, which was signed by then uh, pre Philippine President Fidel B. Ramos. Okay. All right. Okay. So, sorry. Yeah. Okay. And then on October 2001, as a result of two meetings of the major organizations uh, in the Philippines, May Tatudon, okay? So, um, ARCPP was born. Okay. So, um, it was, there was a meeting held by by the combined leaders of the three organizations, the Martin Papsi, Philippine Association for uh, pulmonary Care and the Philippine Association for Respiratory Therapies and the Philippine Society for the Advancement of Respiratory Therapies got together and signed a memorandum of agreement uniting under one umbrella into the Association of Respiratory Care Philippines Incorporated, which is the ARCTV. So, ito yung ngayon yung ating present national organization, which is a result of the emerging of the three big uh, org RT organization, okay? And then in November 10 or, or November 2001, election of the first batch of ARCPP officer was held in the Philippine Arts Center, okay? And then in 2004, planning and deliberation of the first ARCPP proficiency examination was initiated because at that time, there was no um, positive news or there was no, there was no news yet about about respiratory therapy being re to be being regulated by the Professional Regulation Commission because uh, wala pang progress do sa mga RT bill that has been passed through Congress. Okay, so that's why ARCPP started thinking about proficiency examination para magkaroon ng konting rec um, yung ating parang a little licensure para something that to show people na we have something to show us uh, now we have passed some certain examination, okay? So um, as a result in 2005, the first ARCPP proficiency examination was conducted, okay? Yeah. So again, uh, our, our national organization, Association of Respiratory Care Practitioners of the Philippines or ARCPP was established in um, October 2001 as a merger of the, as a union of the three RT organizations, okay? Namely, the Papsi, Part, and Pisar. Okay. Yeah. So um, these are the presidents of or representatives of this Philippine different uh, RT organization. For Papsi, the president it was represented by President Ra Ramon Makainan, and then the Pisar was represented by then President Mr. Alejandro Palando, and part by Mr. Marcelino Manera. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, and these are the founding officers of the ARCPP. Okay, so for president, uh, Wilmer D. G. Balera, who by coincident is is now the press, the present uh, ARCPP president. Okay, and then vice president Jesus Espinas for secretary Marcelino Balera, assistant secretary Risalina Sumangil, who is. Uh, 
based in Saudi Arabia now. Then Treasurer Telma P. Santos, Assistant Treasurer Arman Esther Rosario, I think based in Singapore, and also the Auditor Apollo B. Aguilar, who is based in Singapore too. Okay? So ito yung mga founding ARCPP officers. Okay? And then in 2008, okay, so that was in February 28, Filipino artists in the UAE joined together in the Blissed Emirates Association of Respiratory Care Practitioners to unite Filipino artists in the UAE to campaign for PLC license for respiratory therapists. Okay, so um, the move was actually initiated because the health authority at Dhabi at that time started looking for uh, started looking for license na mga Filipino RT because at that time our category was only as a technician. Okay, so they said uh, we then we need to have a proof that we are licensed from our own country. Kaya yon. Kaya um, um, kaya we initiated that move. Though um, I don't need it at that time because I'm a registered in the in the United in the United States. But because but uh, for some reason I got actively involved and then became elected as the first chairman of the ARCP who started to collaborate. So I started collaborating with ARCPP actually and the uh, Philippine amb ambassador in Abu Dhabi. Okay, to uh, to campaign for PRC license, and we started doing that campaign uh, in 2008. Okay, yeah. So um, this is the logo of the Emirates Association of Respiratory Care Practitioners, which actually was born just recently. Okay, in uh, February 8, 28, 2008, and it just celebrated its 13th year anniversary. Okay. Yeah. So um, in 2009, AARCP AARC started collaborating with ARCPP to campaign for the passage of Arta Bill. Okay, so actually that was evidence in a meeting held okay, so, on August 9, 2009. Actually, this is in my farm in Antipolo City. Okay, so then sila yung mga officers na matin. Uh, ARCPP and the president at that time is is, is, is the late Araceli Pascual. Okay, and you have to admire this lady because she spent so much for ARCPP and then stands and the stand a lot. Okay, for the profession. Okay, and then to see yung ating future president ARCPP Cesar Bogawisan and to see Melanie. It will, I mean, uh, naging chairman then of ARCP and now the chairman of the board of directors. Okay. So it is first meeting to campaign for the passage of RT Bill. Okay, yeah. Okay, so also in 2009, yon ng nationwide campaign for the passage of the RT Bill. Okay, so the ARCPP nationwide, ang title is ako mismo para sa RT Bill. Okay, so we try to raise fund by um, distributing cans like a piggy bank plan para to collect uh, funds for the campaign because uh, it was very costly campaigning for uh, for the for the passage of the RT bill. Okay, Dakit, the hindi kawang biro. I have witnessed the officers of the RCPP spend so much of their time and money, for their own money, okay, but to campaign for the RT bill. Okay, going to the Congress, going to the Senate. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Um, in December 8, okay, so that was in 2008, the Philippines resumed its membership as member country by the International Council for Respiratory Care during the ICRC annual business meeting at the ARC convention in Anaheim, California. And at that time, I was elected as the ICRC governor for the UE and the Philippines. And this was my first time in the United States. Okay, so that was during, that was in 2008. So, all right. So, ICRC or the International Council for Respiratory Care is an international organization based in the United States, composed of twenty-eight countries right now. Okay, and then with uh, the additional Yemen and Oman as the new member countries uh, starting this year. Okay, yeah. so um, so I'm elected as um, the ICRC governor. So I go to the U.S. every year to to make a report on the progress of respiratory care in the Philippines, okay? which actually 
I'll, I'll, be, re I'll be relinquishing soon. Okay, so um, I'll be I'll be telling them I'll be submitting a letter officially that this might be my last term because I'm retiring as a as a respiratory care practitioner. Okay, so this. This is during uh, this is uh, during the ICRC annual business meeting, and usually this is my presentation represent, presenting the ERCPP, the Professional Regulatory Board for Respiratory Therapy, and then the count the Philippine as a whole. Okay, so every year, usually in November and December. Okay, yeah. so um, and then let me talk to you about this history of the Philippine therapy, the Philippine Respiratory Therapy Bill. So in December 20, 2009, it was jointly ratified by the House of Representatives and the House of the Philippine Senate and actually came into a Philippine Respiratory Therapy Bill of 2009. Okay, so uh, then in March 9, 2010, it became a Republic Act 10024, otherwise known as the Philippine Respiratory Therapy Act 2009, and was signed into law by then Philippine President. Gloria Macapagal Royal. Okay, so yeah, and after, okay, imagine after how many years? I think after almost 20, more than 25 years, okay, so ayon, the katuto then yung ating ambition to be, to be, ano, to be professionalized, okay, and that this was the start of the, of the process or the professionalization process, okay. So, matagal tagal din, okay? Because, okay, uh, because we are we are one of the few healthcare professionals na walang lisensya na nagtatrabaho, okay? And then May 11 in 2010, official publications of the Republic Act 1002 for a major newspapers in the country, which was jointly sponsor, sponsored by ARCPP and ARCP as the as a requirement by the PRC, okay? Yeah. All right, so. Um, Okay, so ito yan, okay? So ito yung kinalabasan natin which resulted into the licensure examination. Republic Act 10024 or the Philippine Respiratory Therapy Act of 2009. Okay, so basically ito yung ating authors sa House of Representatives, si Congressman Marcelino Chudoro. So siya nag-introduce ng bill sa na, sa House as a House of Representative House Bill 6410, and that after it was passed um, in the third and final reading, yon sa Senate naman, okay? Kaya yan. Sa Senate naman, naaprobahan siya, okay? Uh, just, uh, okay? So this was one of those is, uh, instances that they were, that they have to go to the House of Representative, Representatives to represent the profession, okay? And then to be able to discuss with the author regarding the RT bill, okay? Yeah. Okay, so we have then Mr. Jesus Espinas, okay, one of the which is, which happened to be one of the members of the RT board now, Senen Tiope, uh, the other member, and then Cesar Bogui, and at that time Mr. President, and then uh, George, okay? Yeah. Okay, so Senate bill, uh, 34999 was approved and passed in final reading December 14, 2009. Okay, so and then that was jointly ratified, ratified on December 20, 2009. Okay, that was the Philippine Respiratory Therapy Act, of, which was jointly ratified by the by the two house. Okay, okay. All right, sorry. Yeah. So again, yeah. So. Um, this was seen as the light at the end of the tunnel because we thought for a while that it's not going to happen on during my time. But uh, persistence, hard work, collaborations, and cooperation, natupad din yung pinapangarap ng bawat Filipino respiratory therapist na magkaroon ng licensure exam para magkaroon ng licensure. Okay? So, Republic Act number 10024 otherwise known as the Philippine Respiratory Act of 2009, officially regulating the practice of respiratory care through licensure exam. Kaya may board exam tayo ngayon. Okay? Creating the first professional regulatory board for respiratory therapy that was signed into law on March 10, 2010 by then Philippine President Gloria M. Arroyo. Okay? Yeah. So, in May 2013, na select yung ating first members of the pressure professional Re regulatory board for respiratory therapy. By then, 
uh, Philippine President Benigno C. Aquino. Okay? Yeah. So, also in 2013, the first RT board or the RT licensure exam was held successfully at Manuel West Quezon University in Manila um, on October 20, actually 29 to 30, 2013. Okay? And also, uh, three years after that, ayun, nagkaroon naman tayo ng special licensure exam for RT in um, joining other profession sa Middle East naman. Okay, so kaya yun, nagkaroon ng opportunity yung mga Filipino artists based in the in the Middle East to take the board exam while um, sa, sa Middle East mismo. They don't have to come to the Philippines anymore. Okay, so um, ito yung first law, ito yung logo ng ating Board of Respiratory Therapy. Okay, and who are the first three members? There are, yan, Ms. Sunita Toledo as the chairperson, okay, and then Senate Chope as second member, and then Mr. Sousa Spinas as the third member. So, ito sila, okay? So, the first members of the Personal Regulatory Board for Respiratory Therapy. Mr. Sousa Spinas um, as the third, second member, Ms. Sunita Toledo as the chairman, chairperson, and then Senate Chope as the first member, okay? And in 2013, for the first time, uh, in the parade of color ng PRC, the respiratory therapy is represented. So, yun, okay? May logo na tayo, okay? Which was a big step because for a while, wala tayong recognition as a healthcare professional. Okay, okay so, um, again, it was on October 29, 2013, na hinald ang ating first RT licensure exam successfully at the Manuel Luis Quezon University. Okay. And then also in 2017, because of the law passed uh, by Senator Trillanes on Republic Act 10912, otherwise known as the CPD Act of 2016, requiring professionals to have CPD units earned to, to renew their license. Ayan, the Corona selection of the first member of the CPD Council for Respiratory Therapy. Okay? Yeah. So, as sila yun ang una naging member natin during the outtaking. So, the first members uh, of the chairperson is Ms. Ulita Toledo. The first uh, member is Mr. Wilmer Barrera as the president of the ARCPP or the National Organization representing the academics, Ms. Danaline Evangelista. Okay, so sila yung unang members, but uh, sila yung members ng CPD Council for Respiratory Therapy. Okay, yeah. Also in 2017, the second ARCPP International Conference was held in Marriott Hotel in Manila. So we we're able to invite some of our American friends to be the speaker and also to grant the affiliate chapter status of the ARCPP from the ARC. Okay. So we have guests here as Timothy, um, past ARC Press President Timothy Mayers, and then John, uh, John Heiser. Okay. So sila yung ating, uh, sila yung nag -reward, or nag award ng ating international affiliate status. Okay. So in a, in a ceremony during the first day of the second international conference. So this was during the awarding of the ARC International Affiliate Chapter ng ARCPP. Okay? Yeah. All right. So, so that was the past. Okay. So ngayon, how is the RT profession in the Philippines now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So moving forward. Yeah. Okay. So let me begin with how the RTRP license made the difference. Okay. The professionalization of respiratory therapy in 2013 has opened up the door for Filipino artists locally and abroad with the first RT licensure examination held successfully at the Manila Luis Quezon University, okay, Manuel Luis Quezon University on October 29, 2013. The future of Filipino artists became brighter with the earned RTRP credentials. The Philippine artists became more competitive in Singapore and the Middle and the Middle East. And one positive note that I can be proud of is that how the RTRP license was recognized in the UAE and and be able to get the salary that we never even thought of before. Okay, so so naging na because of the RP, RTRP license, 
we became equal with American RRT and the Canadian CSRT. Yeah. Okay, so ganun, ganun naging advantage yung ating RTRP license. Okay, so, so yeah, this was during the first co-taking ceremony for respiratory therapies, which was held at Manila Hotel. Okay, yeah. So, ito yun. So, basically, ito yung mga atin, yung mga, yung mga pioneer ng respiratory therapies in the Philippines. Okay. All right. Also, there were several societies that, uh, that was formed uh, right after the first O-taking. So, the first one is the Philippine Society of Respiratory Therapy Educators, the PSRT, which was established in January 2013. The, the PSRT is composed of all budget of science and, art and respiratory therapy educators in the Philippines. Okay, so sila yan. So this was during the taking of the founding officers of the PSRT that was uh, at that time it, um, it was elected chairman was Miss Dinaline Evangelista from the Mindo Aguinaldo College at that time. Okay, so sila yan. Okay, and then so on. So annual conferences were held um, in order to tackle problems and then mga issues na PSRTE, okay? So this was one in one of the conference, okay? And these are the most in the L, itong ating mga RT, BSRT educators in the Philippines in one of their um, gatherings or meetings, okay? Okay, and then also we, we have a technical committee representing respiratory therapy at the College of Missions on Higher Education, say, the Department of Education. Okay, so the Commission on Higher Education Technical Committee on Respiratory Therapy is a team of doctor and RT professional tasked to look into the regulation and implementations of the BSRT curriculum and the respective universities and colleges running it. Okay, so so this is in one of the meeting ng ating uh, members of the Chad Technician. Committee, our uh, technical committee. Okay, so I think this was headed by, yeah, so I can't remember his name, but this is um, uh, headed by Marcelino Valera, okay, from Perpetual Help and Rigmore Gico. Um, we uh, the RT board represented by Mr. Jesus Espinas and the academy represented by Miss Danalin. Okay, yeah, yeah. so um. So basically, ati ating mga BSRT program in the Philippines right now, okay? So by alphabetical order, we have the Cagayan State University to Gigarao offering the program, Cebu Doctors University in Cebu, Central Luzon Doctor Hospital Educational Institute in Tarlac City, Central Philippine University in Iloilo City, College of Our Lady of Mount Carmel in San Fernando, Pampanga, then Far Eastern University in Quezon City, and then Norma College, San Fernando, La Union, and then Mary Charles College in Manila, New Era University, one of the newest okay, you know, uh, pro, uh, university offering the BSRG program in Quezon City, Our Lady of Fatima University in Valenzuela, Perpetual Health College in Manila, Pine City College in Baguio City, St. Jude College in Manila, St. John's and Paul College in Laguna, Calamba Laguna, San Pedro College in Davao City, Okay. And then we have Good Samaritan College in Cabanatuan City, University of Zamboanga in Zamboanga City, University of Batangas in Batangas City, University of Perpetual Health System, Dalta in Las Piñas, and last but not the least, University of Perpetual Health System in Binyang, Laguna. Okay. Yeah. So also to, to represent the students, Okay, so they were able to establish the first Philippine Society of Respiratory Therapy Students or the PSRTS. Okay, so um, this is what um, this to be the voice of the BRC students and occasionally organizing uh, conferences or seminars for 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 the, their fellow students. Okay, so so I think I think picture I think um, our ARCPP officer Ron Kegel is one of the advisor. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So uh, some, some of our students and our future. Yeah. Okay, then talking about the CPD Council for Respiratory Therapy, actually the Republic Act 10912, the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016, paved the way for the creation of the Continuing Professional Development Council for Respiratory Therapy. The first chairperson is 
um, PRB Chairman Rita V. Toledo. Okay, so the I think first members of the CPD Council, Mr. Wilmer Balera and Ms. Dana Lynn Evangelista. Okay, so and this was taken during their oath taking ceremony. Okay, so I think I think uh, PRC Commissioner um, uh, Attorney Pilando and Architect Dennis Reyes. Sila yung ating mga PRC Commissioner. Okay, so. Sila yung nag-administer ng photocopies ng ating tatlong CPD, mem CPD members for respiratory therapy. Okay. Alright. Okay, so, um, so mentioning again, it is the our ERCTP, which is no, which is also the accredited integrated professional organization for respiratory therapy. The ERCTP was registered in SEC and is considered as non stock non-profit organization. Okay, so again. Yeah. So, unfortunately, uh, okay, so according to or as per the Respiratory Therapy Bill of 2009, it mandated that all RPRPs to be a member of the ARCPP. So, it is compulsory. To date, the ARCPP has more than 5,000 RT members, both from here and abroad. Okay, so it is the logo of the national organization. Association of Respiratory Care Practitioners of Philippines Incorporated. And these are the founding officers. And then these are the current officers. Okay. So supposedly, mang term nila, mang tapat mang end ngayon. Okay. President Wilmer Valera, Vice President is Janeline D. Mangalista, Secretary for Membership, Ronnie Cahigan, Secretary Catherine Aradanas, Treasurer Tito Kapay Kapay, PRO Nancy Tabangkura. Okay, so yun ang ating current officers. Okay, yan. So, okay. Okay, so as an accredited integrated professional organization or IPO, it was on March 4, 2006, that was when he, when, when RCPP became a member or became an IPO. Okay, the certificate of accreditation IPO 049 was awarded to ARCPP by the Professional Regulation Commission signed by the board uh, respiratory therapy and the commissioner Teofino Hilando. Okay, yeah. All right. So, I think our team, um, presidents of ARCTP local and international chapter. Okay, so. Okay, so for the ARCTP local chapters, we have the ARCP. The first uh, local chapter that was established is the ARCTP Northern Luzon chapter. Okay, so I think I think. Uh, o taking ceremony nila headed by the president Rigalisa Bogsulen okay, from Baguio City. Okay, yeah. So, yan, okay. So, with the ARCPP, the officers with the ARCPP president. Okay. And then, second one is the ARCPP Central Luzon chapter headed by um, Joy Perillo. Okay, yeah. So, ito yun. During, it was held during the, the o taking was held during the 13th annual convention last July 21, 2017, okay? So, ito yung ating mga officers nila during the conference that they organized and sponsored, okay? And, and then, we have the ARCPP Dabao and Mindanao chapter. This was headed by Rose Bida, okay? Rose Bida Varsa as the president. And at that time, they held a conference, they held their own conference, and one uh, one under distinguished guest is Dabo City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpe. Okay, so, and also represented by our ARCPP President Wilmer Valera and Jesus Espinas from the RT board. Okay, and so, again, okay, so other pictures of the uh, ARCPP Dabo Mindanao chapter. Okay. And then, ang pinakalas organization natin, that's a Minton Business Local Chapter, is the ARCPP Ilo, Ilo, Ilo Chapter. Um, okay, so um, headed by Ma'am Rina. Okay, so ito yung ating uh, group picture nila. Okay. okay. Also, um, we have ARCPP International Up Chapters. Okay, so it's officially recognized by ARCPP. Okay. So the first one is the MH Association of Respiratory Care Practitioners, or the ARCPP, based in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. Okay. So, ito yung mga some of the members, uh, some of the officer members of ARCPP during the 
first all-taking ceremony in 2013 in which we have Ms. Julita Toledo, uh, the PRBT chairman, as our guest of honor. Okay, yeah. So then the first one that was established in Saudi Arabia is the RCPP uh, KSA International Chapter, Western Region, okay, which is in China. Okay, so it, uh, it is during their old taking ceremony during their last election. Okay, and then we also have the Central Region or the Riyadh and Central Region Chapter. Okay, so yeah. so at that time headed by uh, Dwight Gabriel. Okay, yeah. oh, it's okay. And then we have in Qatar we have the. Philippine Association of Respiratory Practitioners, Qatar. Okay, so this was headed. Um, the founding president is um, my friend and colleague, Mr. Ricardo Mandanas. Okay, so this was in Doha, Qatar. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, so just to um, just to give you an overview of the last election. Okay. So the last election was held. The last election for the executive officers of ARCPP was held in. At the Marriott Hotel during the ARCPP convention on July 20, 2018. Okay, so I'm actively involved at that time as the one of the as the advisor of the uh, of the group. Okay, so I think I think ARCPP call So we established a body to oversee the election process to have a fair and a reasonable one. Okay. Yeah. So, our um, chairman is um, Mr. Alan Sapanta, Shanyo Ating, chairman of Konomelec uh, for 2018, who is the manager of the pulmonary department at Makati Medical Center at present. Okay. So, ito yung grupo namin. Okay. Then, ang conversing ng ARCPP uh, or yeah, election in 2018. Okay. So, this was during this was uh, uh, their oath taking from 2018 and 2021. Okay? So, ito yung ating mga present officers. Okay? So, supposedly, dapat magkakaroon ng election this year. Okay? So, we don't know how it's going to be because of the pandemic. Okay? So, so yan ang big question now. Who will be the new ARCPP executive officers for the term 2001, okay, 21, to 24 okay yeah. okay and so also every year okay so the most outstanding respiratory therapy pressure regulation commission and the foundation of outstanding professionals annually select the most outstanding professional for each profession okay aside from um, the most outstanding professional but the most outstanding uh regulatory board okay so then after that um, selection or an awarding process is held uh, a few months after the selection. Okay, so for respiratory therapy, ang una naging ating most outstanding professional or most outstanding respiratory therapist is Mr. Rudolph Ambrosio. Okay, so who is based in Davao in 2014. Okay, yeah. so um, second, yours truly in 2016. I became the 2016 Most Outstanding Respiratory Therapist. And then in 2017, the late Araceli Pascual, okay, so also was awarded the Most Outstanding Respiratory Therapy Award. Okay, yeah. okay and then in 2018, we have Marcelino Valera. He is the Dean of the College of Respiratory Therapy sa Perpetual Health in Binyang. Okay, so it's in 2018. Okay. 2019, walang naging, um, I think walang naging selection. Okay. So it, um, it resumed in 2020. 20. Ang ating naging winner on studying post outstanding respiratory therapist is no other than Dr. Davy C. Regulario, the dean of the College of Respiratory Therapy in the uh, University of Perpetual Health. Delta system in Las Vegas. Okay. Yeah. Also, prior to that, she became and uh, she earned her doctorate degree. So she's now Dr. Davis C. Regulario. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now it's open for nomination. Who will be the next most outstanding respiratory therapist for 2021? I think the deadline for nomination is in April. Yeah. Okay. Also, Okay, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, the ARC International Fellows Award. Yeah. So, um, it, the ARC International Fellows in, in 1990 is a program that's given non-U.S. healthcare professionals an opportunity to visit the U.S. and observe respiratory care as it is practiced in the UAE. And ARCPP is very proud to have four most recent ARC International Fellows. Okay? So, we have Mr. Jesus Pina, the Pinakamaga, 1994-1994. Yours truly in 2009, Mr. Dita Almonte 2011, and Ms. Lita Toledo, our chairman of the Board of Respiratory Therapy in 2016. Okay? So, it is 1994 ARC International Fellow. Okay? Mr. Jesus Espinas, look at Jess. Okay? So, he looks very young here. It was held in December 1994 in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Okay? And Okay, so fortunately, yours truly too was uh, was granted uh, well, so was selected as the 2000 ERC International Fellow uh, with some of my colleagues from China, from Japan, from um, from Latin America, from I think from Ecuador, from Nigeria, and from uh, Azerbaijan. Yeah. Okay, so that was in 2009. In 2011, Ms. Edita Almonte was also awarded the ARC International Fellow on December 2011 in Orlando, Florida, USA. Okay, and most recently, ang ating last sa ngayon is Ms. Julita Toledo, 2016 ARC International Fellow with her fellow, and Mr. Uh, ICRC President, Mr. Dr. Jerome Sullivan. Okay. So, yan ang ating, so hopefully, yan, who will be the next ARC International Fellow, okay? Yeah. All right, so, uh, so, yeah, so 2019 was a banner year for respiratory therapy, okay? So, in a way na, um, it was, uh, I became a fellow of the ARC and granted an award in, during the ARC Congress in 2019 at um, uh, Louisiana, okay, in New, New Orleans, USA. Okay? So something that I'm very proud of and I'm very thankful of kasi hindi ko nasa na um, at this age, okay, so magkakaroon pa ako ng award or makipili pa ako for this fellow uh, fellowship award. Okay, yeah. okay so also um, to discuss about ARCPP International Appellation, yeah. ARCPP seek international collaboration to further enhance relationship with the art international community. And on December 6, 2017, ARCPP was granted the International Affinity Chapter status by the American Association of Respiratory Care. Also, the current and memorandum of agreement, ang ARCPP at ang Canadian Society for Respiratory Therapies, increasing the collaboration and partnership between the two organizations. Okay, so, this was the message from Thomas Carlstrom, Executive Director of the CEO of the ARC. Okay, so congratulating ARCPP for granting, um, for for being uh, one of the ARC International Appellate Chapter. Okay, so I think I think uh, certificate of recognition from the ARC. Okay? Yeah. okay, so the awarding ceremony was held during the second international conference held at Marit Hotel in Manila, Philippines last um, December 2000, last December 6, 2017. Okay. So, it is our collaboration or our memorandum of understanding with CSRT or the Canadian Society for Respiratory Therapists. Okay? Yeah. So, increasing collaboration, partnership between the two organizations. Okay. So, you know, I a uh, strong collaboration with the two top countries um, whose um, respiratory therapies has excelled over the years. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, sa ngayon, okay, makilamano natin how important the respiratory therapies has become. Okay, yeah. So respiratory therapies, the breath of life. Okay. The respiratory therapies is one of the frontliners. There been before that the role of RT has been highlighted in critical care and emergency medicine, especially in the care of our critically ill, ventilated, COVID-19 infected patient. Okay? So, doon talaga nakita ang importance ng respiratory therapies in the hospital, especially in the critical care unit. 
artists as one of the medical frontliners are the new heroes in this pandemic period and salute to all artists and other medical frontliners. Okay? Medyo malapit na. Okay, yeah. And, yeah. And so, also the RCPP as a respiratory therapist national organization and the art ministry has been consulted by the national government in the national stock filing of ventilators, procurement of the much needed personal protective equipments and the management of ventilated critically ill COVID-19 infected patients. Okay, so, yeah. so they ask, uh, they ask our opinions, there was our suggestions on or our input on this um, on this very critical issue. Okay, so I uh, so some of our RT professionals working in the critical care unit. This was in the emergency department. Okay, and then this is in the critical department. Yeah. So managing ventilators. Okay, so it's one of our specialty. Okay, yeah. All right. So um, first, um, I'm like to wish our um, our students or our RT colleagues in the profession sitting for the RT licensure exam on March 10 and 11. Okay, so wish them all the best and Lord's guidance on this very important journey. Okay, so we pray in a, uh, we'll have a successful um, successful RT licensure pro, uh, uh, the RT licensure examination in the face of this pandemic. Okay, so wish them good luck. Okay. All right, so the last section of my presentation will be about the future of RT in the Philippines, okay? So basically, it was a very bright future to them, okay? So I've been telling our students that they have made the right and best decision to enroll in the BSRT program and became a res and become a respiratory therapist in the future, okay? And it's because of the Republic Act number 10024 or the Philippine Respiratory Therapy Act of 2009, okay? So I may even joke then that it's because of this bill na sila ay nag-redebut na papakahirap sa RTC licensure examination. Though I explained to them that the license is our protection, okay? So yan then, now it will protect us from any any suit in the future knowing fully well na tayo ay disensyal, okay? And also on the RTRP license, became our passport for a better life, okay? Because Filipino respiratory therapists are in demand abroad, okay? It's from to earn dollars, okay? So again, the future is very bright for Filipino respiratory therapists locally and abroad. Filipino respiratory therapists are in demand in all hospitals in the country because of the Department of Health's requirement for every hospital to set up their own art department, which resulted in higher pay and better benefits for Filipino respiratory therapists. Okay, so ngayon, medyo tumaas na, nakaroon na ng plantilla ng ating mga Filipino respiratory therapists being hired by the Department of Health. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Filipinos are artists are in the man abroad, particularly in the Middle East, in which more than 65% of the artist staff are Filipino. Okay? Yeah. Which is real true. We control the Filipino artists control the market for, for respiratory therapy staff in the Middle East, 65% of that in Saudi Arabia, and about 80% in the UAE and Qatar, Oman, and in Kuwait. Okay, so so the field of respiratory therapy has developed into subspecialty areas that increases job opportunity for BST graduates and Filipino artists. Okay, so yeah. So basically, tayo naging major source ngayon to be a polysomnographer, okay? Yan, or sleep lab technologies. Also, some of us became ECMO technician, or it is another field where RT can go to to be trained for, okay? And then critical care specialists, okay? Working in PFT laboratories, or as in transport team, landing air, working in unital and pediatrics, Okay, in pulmonary rehabilitation, okay, yeah. okay. as an educator in CPU, COPD education, or as an asthma uh, educator specialist, okay, also as instructor in the life support uh, program of the hospital, and as emergency medical technician. So, ngayon, marami na tayong, uh, there's, some, there's many options where we can, um, where respiratory therapists can can engage with or can go through, okay? The only thing is, yeah, but we need to do more, 
one thing um, each one of us has to work for. We need to do more to be better recognized nationwide as a worthy healthcare professional. Okay, so and I think uh, is it's one of the setback na bakit hindi tayo nakakaroon ng increased na maraming enrollment sa ating mga RT school. And so we need to be make people aware nationwide na we are a worthy healthcare professionals. And we need to advocate more for our profession. We need to be more passionate and dedicated to this normal profession. Okay? So, yun ang pamukha natin sa kanila. Okay. Uh, um, this is not, uh, ang ginagawa ng RT, hindi lang pauso or yun nga, yun immunization or just physiotherapist. The RT, the Philippine artists can do a lot more. Okay? Like in CPR, in ECMO, in critical care, in pulmonary function, in transport, in care of our newborn, pulmonary rehab, as, a, as, a, as, as ambulance, and as police home doctor. Okay? So, marami pa tayong dapat pakita, or marami tayong skills na dapat na may pakita, and make people aware na yun ang ating mga skills na dapat natin na, 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 na we can all, na we can work uh, to, to be uh, to have more, uh, to have more skills than this. Okay, yeah. All right, yeah. So I would like to thank this of uh, the to um, take this opportunity to sign off as a respiratory therapist. Okay, yeah. So thank you, Lord, talaga for the blessings and guidance that you have showed me over the years as a respiratory therapist. I've been um, blessed to be an RT for the last thirty-eight years. Okay. I was born to be a respiratory therapist, to hold, to aid, to save, to help, to teach, to inspire. It's who I am, my calling, my passion, my life, and my work. Okay? And so, yeah, so um, my favorite shirt that was given to me by one of my staff in Aline Hospital in Abu Dhabi, Ginger and her husband, and happened to be in anak sa kasal. Okay? So, um, Again, thank you very much for this beautiful shirt. And I'm signing off as a respiratory therapist. Okay. So um, a profession or uh, that I consider to be a blessing, not only as a job, because it has um, given me so much blessing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. After 38 years, uh, thanks, Michael. Thanks for the Philippine Association of Respiratory Therapy International for giving me this opportunity to be able to talk or to present the history of the Philippine Respiratory Therapy and to officially sign off. Okay, so goodbye and thanks for listening. Medyo mahaba nga ng pasensya na kayo. Okay, all right, officially signing off. Thank you. Okay, all right, Michael, I'm done. Thank you, Dr. Noel. Um, thank you so much and, you know, um, Everyone, I believe, is, you know, very thankful for everything that you do for the respiratory therapy professions, to all the patient lives that you have touched, and for everything that you do for, you know, a lot of people. We appreciate it, and thank you for mm -hmm. using uh, our show to, um, um, you know, um, announce your farewell and um you know to the profession and we congratulate you for your retirement you know your official thank retirement and thank you very much uh oh sorry let me fix this real quick thank you very much dr noel uh, we do appreciate and thank you for uh everything that you have done um yep so now um we have uh, our live audience. If you have any questions, please feel free to use our chat box. <laughs> and uh, um, we're, we're still here. Um, you know, I would like to thank you. I know Dr. Noel, I would like to uh, share to you. I had you uh, for an hour for the Q&A and <laughs> they couldn't hear me, but they could hear you. So now, uh, Miss Sabrina Lisa Bugsel and just and Doctor Davy um, messaged me on Facebook and mentioned like, "Oh, we can finally hear Doctor Noel, but we couldn't hear you." Um, <laughs> but again, uh, this show is about our guest. You as an RT, so whatever I said, Doctor Noel heard me. <laughs> 
But you know, these are the these are the problems that we will encounter in a live show. And you know, thank you so much. Uh, we're just waiting for. Uh, I'm gonna mention a shout out here, uh, Miss Finn, Mr. Jesus Mario, uh, Mr. Kenneth Arevlo from Houston, Texas, Miss Finn from Al Ain Abu Dhabi, and um, Miss Rena Lisa from um, Baguio City. And then Dr. Davey from Manila. Thank you guys so much for filling me in and updating me and joining us on our live show. And then again, um, Dr. Noel, thank you very much. I don't think we have yeah, any you're questions most welcome. at the moment. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll see you. Uh, hopefully, you know, the AARC Congress will be live in person this year. It will be uh, in... Um, Phoenix, Arizona. Hopefully, it'll be live in person. Hopefully, yeah. with the vaccine rollout in the U.S., they will open the the borders for tourists and uh, for official businesses for more, uh, you know, for more engagement. Hopefully, that will happen so we can see each other again. And would like to personally thank you because when I finished respiratory therapy education or education and became a respiratory therapist, um. You know, I found you on Facebook and reached out to you. I was like, who is this Dr. Noel Tibor show? I was like, <laughs> you know, did some research and I found you. And I'm really glad to know you. And I'm really thankful you inspired me so much to be involved in the respiratory mm -hmm. th therapy profession, not only in the United States, but also in the Philippines. Because as you mentioned in your um, presentation, that um, if... You know, if there's only few of us advocating for the profession, who else will, right? Again, I mentioned earlier, uh, people didn't hear this, but I mentioned this on the q and A. I I do complain every day. I do complain every day about how the respiratory therapy profession is not well recognized. Even here in the United States, trust me, it's a very young profession worldwide. But, you know, that inspired me to do something. To do something about the profession, to, to advocate for the profession, to be someone who's going to be useful and be a voice for the respiratory therapy profession. This is what made the Filipino Association of Respiratory Therapy International, which again, it's not a formal organization. It's just a group of like-minded individuals that would like to advocate, be engaged in the respiratory therapy professionals. We don't see red, white, and blue or yellow, right? We are respiratory therapists. That's the goal of the group. And then again with this show, Ang Arti Mo, um, very, very proud and very proud of the support of all our members and their engagement with us. And, um, you know, hopefully um, this platform will help uh, advocate for the profession, at least in the digital world, uh, for us to, you know, um, invite more students and future RTRPs or future RRTs, future respiratory care practitioners in the Philippines, in the Middle East, in the Singapore, or even in the United States. Hopefully, this would be a platform that they'll be inspired. They'll get to know respiratory therapists, and they'll be mm -hmm. able to, um, you know, join us in taking care of our patients in the near future. Um, do you have anything? Oh, wait. Oh, here. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, everyone. I'm uh, seeing on the chat box. Anything else do you have for us, Dr. Noel? We truly appreciate your time. And thank you. Thank you so much. We'll, we're going to, you know, stay updated and in touch, at least on Facebook, until they reopen the borders <laughs> to visit the Philippines. All right, uh, Dr. Noel, can you hear me yeah. okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I can, Michael. Well, yeah, I think I, I have said my word. Okay, so I think, um, so... Yeah, there's a bright future for Filipino respiratory therapies. You know, Alan, uh, we still have a lot of work to do here, from here. Okay? Yeah. So, kulang pa, hindi pa enough para 
para talagang to say na we have done it or we are successful in our field. Okay? So, so looking back and hopefully wala namang masaktan or walang masagasaan. I think uh, we need to improve our BSRT curriculum para maging at par with the, with the BSRT curriculum with other countries. Uh, hopefully, uh, our art schools, we need to spend more sa ating mga clinical simulation laboratory. Okay, so, and I'm hoping and praying na matuloy na tong because there's one agency in the United States, okay, so who contacted me about two weeks ago and looking for Filipino respiratory therapists that they said could possibly open the uh, work uh, sa U.S. So I don't know how realistic, but they said uh, uh, there's a good chance for Filipino respiratory therapists to enter the, to enter the market, even if they're not registered there. So I'm not really sure, but uh, they asked me for people that I can recommend to uh, to apply for for a for a job there. So it's something that I'm still I'm still doubtful. Yeah. Okay. So what is your take on that, Michael? Okay. Do you think there's a chance? Um, you know, as for now, you know, that's the that, that that is our um that is our goal. That's what we wanted. You are I uh, know you are me Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Noel, sorry. I think if I uh, can the audience hear me? Hello? Okay. Can you hear me, uh Mam Rina Lisa? Sorry. And can you hear me, Dr. Noel, right? Yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure all our audience can hear us. Um, uh, all right. So I think, Dr. Noel, um, that's what we wanted. That's what we aspire to happen. Um, hopefully, that's true. I have not heard anything yet. But with the effects of the COVID-19 um, um, with the effects of COVID-19, sorry, just asking for feedback if people could hear me. Asking, you know, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, Dr. Noel can hear me. I'm asking yeah, the I audience can hear. real quick. Um, sorry. Okay, good. So people can hear me. Yeah, so hopefully uh, that's true. I have not heard anything, uh, at least on uh, the COARC which is the commission of, um, sorry, not COARC, but the uh, NBRC, which is the accrediting body of the, uh, the United States. Hopefully that is true. I am not sure how would it work because it could happen on some states. They could, you know, they could say that emergency authorization to have um, people enter the United States using special visa and not practice. But at least for state of California, it's in the law that you cannot perform respiratory care without a license, which requires you to be a graduate of a accredited U.S. university or U.S. college to be a, a, a respiratory therapist here. But then again, with the COVID-19, though it affected many of us negatively, there are doors that open for us and hopefully that could happen soon. So if that is true or you need some help Dr. Noel or they needed some help, I would, you know, I would love to be part of that uh, work or negotiation on how could, you know, how could that make, you know, how could that happen in the near future? That would yeah, be okay, a great okay. opportunity for all of us. Okay, yeah, thank you. That's great, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think for me, that's about it. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I have said my word. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Noel, for joining us today. Again, everyone, let's thank and congratulate Dr. Noel Taborcio on his retirement and the great contribution that he uh, gave the profession uh, here and abroad. Thank you so much, Dr. Noel. Okay. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, um, I'll be right back in a few moments here. Let me just switch uh, me to a full screen here.
I'll be right back. Okay, I'm still here. I'm just switching myself here for a full view. Okay. All right. Again, um, thank you for all our viewers today. Um, thank you so much for your engagement, participation, and watching us today. It's a very, it's an honor for us to have Dr. Noel Taborsha with us today, and also. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank each and every respiratory therapist around the globe and most especially to my Filipino respiratory therapist colleague in the Philippines and wherever you may be in the world, Dubai, uh, Abu Dhabi, Singapore, Kuwait, uh, Qatar, uh, United States, Canada, wherever you are and uh, even if you're in Europe and some other countries in the world, we thank you for your service to your profession Thank you for your service to your patients. Thank you for your service to you. Know, thank you for coming into work every single day. Thank you for doing your best 100% every single day. We truly appreciate all your hard work. Now again, I mentioned earlier about the COVID-19. Though it affected us a lot negatively, but there are doors that are opened up. There are now people know what is a respiratory therapist. We don't only do as you know, as mentioned earlier, we just don't do nebulization and just let you inhale it and you'll be better we do a lot of things as discussed earlier so people know us and with the contribution of many people from the arcpp dr noel taborsha and many individuals uh from peace art papsi you guys are uh um we are all thankful for what you did for the profession not only in the philippines but um also abroad you guys contributed so much and i think everyone is very thankful for that so uh we thank you hopefully we can um improve um or not improve i i would i would say that you know we could do more in the future in the philippines because i know it's very physician driven even the united states here too it's mostly the hospitals would like the rts to do more so hopefully we could do more we could improve um, and have more education uh, institution to offer BSRT. Hopefully our hospitals and our doctors would recognize the contribution and the expertise that we could do so they could give us more um, liberty to perform certain um, interventions in the hospital. Hopefully the students will be more engaged um, in the profession because you guys are the future of the profession. You guys are the future professionals. You guys will replace uh, many of us in the near future. And you guys are the, f you know, the, the bright future that we would say that will make this profession better. So again, I encourage uh, each and every one of you, um, if you guys have free time to advocate for your profession, you can complain. It's okay, but do something about it, okay? Um, um, that's about it. If you guys have any questions, please let me know on the comment section on youtube and again thank you everyone i would like to personally thank um um everyone uh, all the members of the party uh, facebook page filipino association respiratory therapists international we just started last year now we're over two thousand members thank you for your engagement your contribution for um engaging with us with uh shared best practices with your questions with your humor we really appreciate it we are a informal group we are not we are not red white and blue but we are respiratory therapists again we don't you know we just want positive vibes we just want to advocate for the profession that's why we're here so we thank you uh uh for all your contribution and hopefully with your continuous engagement uh, now, moving on, again, thank you for Mr. Alan Gonzalez from Los Angeles, Mr. Benji Agleam from Houston, Texas, which, you know, really told me to, hey, 
why don't we do this right uh this show is about education series but since this is our first uh, live show um we we want the audience to know uh what is the respiratory therapy profession in the philippines how it started how is it doing and how are we going to move forward so this is what it's all about on the next episodes uh which are going to be streamed live uh, weekly we will provide more educational um um educational um opportunities for you um i believe next week we will have mr benji Eglim to talk about um airway management and then the following weeks we will offer you neonatal pediatric uh, specialty lecture we will offer you adult critical care lecture about covid19 so this is what it's all about we just want to know the artsy presenting it so you guys will be inspired to do more or you know or just to know them right just to know the filipino rts uh right and then and they will provide us with knowledge and their expertise in the coming uh coming weeks so please stay tuned uh please hopefully you already have hit the like button and subscribe to our page let your colleagues know about our page um and just keep supporting each and every one of us that's all I ask for. So if you guys don't have any more questions, actually I do. If you guys want to do, um, hit uh, comment section on YouTube. I do have a question because I said that I have a surprise for one lucky audience today. <laughs> so I do have a question. And this comes with a price, which the price, it depends on where you are located in the world. That could change, right? But I do have a question, and whoever would be the first person to comment and get the right answer will receive our uh, mystery prize. Again, this uh, uh, this is just a small price and my small token of appreciation. Um, question is, drum roll. Uh, when is the first licensure of RTRP exam? Uh, when was it administered and where? year and the place where the first rtrp exam was held in the philippines first uh comment on the comment section and you get it right you will get our mystery prize so thank you everyone and then i will see who comments and if you can add me uh send a message to party or add me uh personally on my facebook page michael de peralta and i will contact you personally again Thank you very much, my fellow Pinoy RTs, uh, Pinoy Respiratory Care Practitioners, Pinoy Registered Respiratory Therapists, and all the respiratory therapists that are supporting us. Thank you very much. I think I'm kind of a bit delayed, so I will look for your comment, and I will get in touch with you if you get the right answer. Again, the question is, when is the first RTRP or, uh, exam was held and when? where and when that's the question okay all right um if you can add uh the the school the school name sorry i'm going to be more specific when is the first licensure exam and the school name okay i got miss finn there okay um all right so thank you again for your support please um Follow the Filipino Association of Respiratory Therapists International on our Facebook page for more updates about our upcoming shows. It will, uh, it will vary every week because it, it really depends on our speaker when they're available. Again, we would like to thank Dr. Noel Taborsha for today's episode, our pilot episode. And I do apologize for our uh, technical difficulties in the beginning, during, and hopefully right now we're doing great. And... Um, uh, expect in the next episodes that i am now more aware using this uh broadcast studio that i have in google meet uh, maraming salamat po thank you so much and mabuhay and more powers to all of you